I think what we would say to, to local councils and to the health and wellbeing boards is actually the, the work that health visitors do in reaching every mother and child is well documented, it's well accepted and well known, um, it's a very good brand. Health visitors are part of that community, part of that local community that can councils are so concerned about, they are the people that are in the front line where there are families with difficulties, whether that's a housing difficulty or whether it's a, a problem that's going to crop up in schools because there's a difficulty, uh, a special educational need that will have to be provided for. Health visitors are the ones that pick those up very early and give an early warning for the, the councils. Health visitors are the front line of public health. They're the ones that will be able to work with councils to tell them when things may be going wrong and also to help out when things do, when there are difficulties because they know the people in the local area they're working. It, it's a particularly valuable role, I think, health visiting, because it is so holistic, because it encompasses the child and the whole family within the community, and because it covers this whole breadth uh, encompassed by the Healthy Child Programme and gets into every home and all of the coordinating with children's centres and the community and neighbourhood as well. It's interesting about explaining the role of health visitors because people always want to say health visitors are a bit like someone else. They're actually quite like themselves. They're quite unique in that respect. They're a bit like social workers and a bit like early years workers and a bit like doctors and a bit like nurses, but they're all together like health visitors <laughs> and unique to themselves. Uh, they really, uh, we've said over many years that if you get rid of health visitors, you will have to reinvent them. And that's a little bit of what started to happen when we had a drop in health visitor numbers. And we soon noticed the absence of health visitors. And teachers started to say, why have we got children coming to school in nappies? And why have we got children coming to school that can't talk? And that coincided with a big drop in health visitors picking up those issues. And the principles of health visiting are still the same as they were when they were first documented then in 1977. And those principles provide us with an amazing framework to explain the work that we do. Um, and we're still using them today. There are three core forms of practice, and one of those is home visiting, and one is health needs assessment, and one is forming relationships. And those three core practices, when we looked at the research going back 25 or 30 years, it, they all seem to link in together. They're very much interconnected. The, the one thing about health visiting is that health visitors lead the Healthy Child Programme uh, and the particular thing about the Healthy Child Programme we know is that it, that it, it does link with this, these six high impact areas that the Department of Health have set out. It set, they've set out uh, transition to parenting, breastfeeding, uh, maternal mental health, healthy nutrition, activity, healthy weight and obesity, reducing hospital admissions, reducing uh, attendance as well as admissions and, and preventing accidents as well, and the readiness for school, so the two-year review, and is this child actually going to be ready for school in due course? Those are the six areas by which health visitors can demonstrate that they really affect the outcomes for children and families.